What is going on everybody? My name is Uriel here and what I have here is a 2009 MacBook that I made a video of last week. What's different about this video? Well, today's video is going to be a challenge. Drum roll please. We're going to be doing a one week challenge on this 2009 MacBook here. When you say an old MacBook, you probably assume like something from 2020 and 2019 because those computers are already quite old in today's world. They're about five years old now, almost five years old at least. Even an M1 chip is almost four years old. Well, they're four years old right now, so they're turning five. Things are moving quite quick when it comes to technology. And I think the perfect video would be to use a computer that we know that is very old, but not too old to the point where we obviously know it's gonna be unusable. This is one of those computers Computers where it's old, it has a Core 2 Duo, it's not even the best or the latest even back in 2009 or 2010 when this polycarbonate MacBook was released, but it's a MacBook that can still perfectly be used in today's world. I'm going to be upgrading this to meet the minimum specs of a daily computer. All right, so I have a couple of upgraded parts here and we're gonna start off with the SSD. Now this SSD has actually been with me for quite some time. This is an old Samsung Evo that I believe everybody knows what these are. These are very robust and they are pretty much bulletproof. Anything Samsung, honestly, uh, when it comes to drives always has a very good reputation. We got eight gigs of RAM here. Now these are 1333 and these should work. Now these are mismatching. One is a Samsung, one is a Crucial, but I don't think that really makes a difference because I took these out from a 2011 15 inch MacBook that I had laying around. That's gonna be another video. We're gonna be using OpenCore Legacy Patcher to run a much more later version. And this should be pretty clean because we did this last week. I posted a video about this and look at that. It's pretty clean. If you guys remember, this actually had a little bit of an incident. Uh, I believe this is the right speaker. What happened was that the black harness broke off uh, the plastic bit, but the cable were still fine, so I managed to connect them. And as you can see, it's covered by electrical tape. Hopefully it's gonna stay that way, but we're gonna have to get rid of this 250 gig hard drive right here. And this should be a pretty easy way to speed things up by replacing it with an SSD. Just have to plug this in like that. You just have to screw the bracket back. We have upgraded the hard drive to an SSD. Now we just have to take off the old four gigabyte sticks that I have here. They're only four gigs, so you might as well just max it out now that I have a lot of these DDR3 laying around. I'm hoping these are compatible. We're gonna go ahead and start testing this out first before we screw everything back together. No power. That's always great. Did I not plug this in perfectly? I have an 85 watt charger here. See if it charge. Good. You can see the light is red, so that means it's charging. So I guess it was just dead. Let's see if it starts here. Nope. And so the RAM is not compatible. Yep. Thanks. What I have here is a box full of RAM sticks. I got 16 gigs of RAM. I got four gigs, two gigs, even one gigabyte of RAM, which is not gonna be enough in today's world, but you never know. I'm gonna try this A data one and see if I can get lucky and find a suitable RAM for this computer. Okay, so that one works flawlessly. This is four gigabytes. Okay, I think this crucial four gigabyte stick here should work. So that means we have a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. I definitely want at least eight because there's no way I'm gonna survive with just four. Perfect. I have a bootable drive here with Sierra and it has open core patcher on it or open core legacy patcher. We're gonna install it to the EFI of the SSD. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this partition erase. We have fully formatted the SSD. We can run open core patcher here. So install the disk and reboot. Looks like we are on the installation screen. So install Monterey right here wait for almost an hour. All right, so I've successfully installed Mac OS Monterey on this 2009 MacBook unibody right here. And man, this MacBook looks so good with Monterey or any newer Mac OS versions. I love the design of this computer. This is exactly why I wanted to make this video is because I really like the design of this computer. It feels very solid despite being a polycarbonate plastic. I think the best way to describe this computer in my opinion would be an iPhone 5C 
yeah, I don't know if you guys remember that iPhone, but it felt very solid, it felt very thick. And this is exactly how this computer feels. Apple's plastic just really feels something else. I mean, they feel solid. Like there's not a lot of movement or not a lot of flex on a computer, like any Windows computers of this era or even today. And frankly, this is such an interesting design in my opinion that I actually much prefer this over a MacBook Pro unibody of the same era. The 2009 is essentially a MacBook Pro uh, just without any fancy backlit keyboard or I guess at the time SD card, which would have been very useful. And, to me actually would be still useful even today on this challenge. Taking a close look at this computer, we have the 2.26 Intel Core 2 Duo and we got eight gigabytes of 1333 megahertz RAM. It has the NVIDIA N9400M graphics, which is not great. Ideally, you'd want to get the 2010 model because one, you can upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Two, you get the much better graphics, which I believe was a 330M, which is so much better. This one, you could definitely see some frame drops and you can already see that from just moving here around, but Let's go ahead and click Blackmagic speed test here because the downside about these older MacBooks before 2011 is the fact that they're only running, I believe, either 1.5 gigabits per second or 3 gigabits per second on the cable for the hard drive. So you can see it's very much limited to around 200 megabits per second on the right. And I think another 200, yeah, 250, 200 megabits on the read. You're not gonna get the most out of your SSD on these computers. 200 megabits per second is still also better than your traditional hard drive. You can see how it's perfectly usable. This is a pretty decent box size wise. It's pretty big, but what? You can see the sound of this computer is actually pretty good as well. You can see it's running 1080p, which is good and it's pretty it smooth. Let's go ahead and put it a full screen. What do we have here? What is this? Mojack. It takes a bit. <laughs> you guys saw it took about like five seconds for it to fully pop out into full screen, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and open an Amazon website here. You can see it loads decently quick. It really depends on your internet, but look at this. It's perfectly usable. Today marks the first day and so far this computer is not too shabby. You can see there's a lot of frame drops whenever I swipe left and right. Nothing too intensive, so I can still do a lot of my daily routine of checking emails and doing this and that. Um, I'm keeping it everything minimal, so I only have Messages, Spotify, and Google Chrome as one of my web apps or software. I'm not really expecting a lot of this computer, but iCloud's working, everything's working, so I think that's good. Initial reactions, it is absolutely unreal. There's no flappy paddles. What if I want to like downshift and disappear? Okay, so pretty chill day here, playing Spider-Man on my PS5. One thing I definitely noticed is that there's definitely a lot of sluggishness to it. Uh, that might have to do with the fact that this is running Monterey, and also the battery. I feel like the battery might have something to do with this computer being slow, because usually when there's not enough voltage or milliamps on the power of the battery, it makes things slow. This is still pretty cool that I'm able to casually just use this. I mean, I'm even making some note apps and this and that, so... Yeah, this is perfectly usable. It's just little things here and there that I guess I'm a bit spoiled with much newer technology. You know, the cool thing about it is that if I click this one right here, I can turn my iMac into a speaker. And this is using Bluetooth 2.0 or something like that. It's a, it's a very ancient Bluetooth system. In fact, I can just go to uh, where's Spotify here. Spotify just disappeared. <laughs> you can see how long it takes to load. Yeah, dude, this is, give it a couple of seconds. Okay, so I guess that wasn't working. Um, that's awkward. <laughs> it was working a couple of days ago when I first started using this computer. So I think it just needs a bit of a restart, but to put things in perspective, if I move around, see, that's not really bad. It's just when I go to full screen here and I move left and right, you can, you can just see how bad it is. And I turned on the reduced transitions because of how bad it is. If I actually turn off the reduced motion, you can see it just goes down to like 10 frames per second, but it doesn't really impact the speed. It's just the fact that, you know, it just makes things a lot more sluggish. It has been exactly a week since I've been using this. I have a couple of things to say about this computer and a lot of them are not great. I actually daily drove a 2009 MacBook Pro, which is very similar spec-wise 
to this 2009. Really, the difference is just a shell and not having a back of the keyboard and whatnot. But back in 2019, or I believe that was like some, somewhere around 2019, that wasn't so bad. With Monterey on this computer running Open Core Legacy Patcher, this is how I usually use a laptop. Most of the time I use Spotify, which actually I, have, I don't even have it in the background right now. I'm gonna wait for it to load. I have something running in the background when it comes to music, a couple of tabs on the internet. You could see how things are getting to the point where they're struggling a bit. Most significant noticeable difference with this running an unsupported version of Mac OS to let's say High Sierra, which was the last version, was definitely the animations and the smoothness overall experience of this computer is just not really the best thing in the world. Now, if you're very minimalist, we have one tab open at the time, I can show you guys that when you just use this as a email only machine, it's perfect. Even running Monterey, it really is the perfect thing in the world because it isn't pushed. But as soon as you start running two or three tabs with Spotify open in the background or system preferences, activity monitor and the notes app and blah, 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 that's when things start to go downhill. And also overall, the experience with loading things in general takes about like, you can see this right now, it takes about 10 to 30 seconds depending on what website are you in. This has been my experience the past week. Now I am a very patient person, so I didn't really have any issues with that. Uh, this computer, this 2009 computer is swapping memory. Eight gigabytes of RAM is being maxed out with just a couple of tabs open in the background. So imagine an M chip. The CPU might be powerful, but there's not enough physical memory to do that. You know, you're gonna destroy your solid state drive. So it's been a couple of days, definitely more than a week now. I decided to go down to Big Sur because Monterey is just quite a bit on the slower side of things. So I'm very curious to see if Big Sur is a much better operating system. Apply and partition. Finally, agree, agree, and I'm hoping, and I mean I'm hoping, this will be a much better experience than I've experienced with Monterey. I decided to downgrade this to Big Sur for a very big reason and one of that big reason is the fact that it's actually surprisingly a lot faster on Big Sur. So if I just open casual things here, you can see it literally boots up a lot better than Monterey. You know what's crazy about this running Big Sur is that you can see the temperature has significantly dropped down from hovering around 80 uh, 70 degrees Celsius on idle. Now we're running 54 which is still warm mind you but it is still a big significant difference between that and 80 degrees on Monterey. In conclusion I still think this challenge really taught me a lot of how technology is evolving. It's not evolving to the point where it's very significant because the fact that this 2009 MacBook in 2024 can still run a lot of basic applications like YouTube, social media, and whatnot, I could really see this computer lasting for even longer than 2024, definitely. Because of that 64-bit architecture, this thing still has a lot of life left. Not just for macOS versions, I mean, underneath all of this fancy polycarbonate plastic, is a Windows PC because a Core 2 Duo exactly the same as a Core 2 Duo from a Windows computer. There's really no difference between this or a regular Windows computer aside from its glorified hardware and software and integration with Mac OS. The thing is, that really is what's wrong with this computer is that you want to be able to use Mac OS versions because that's what makes a MacBook a MacBook. That's what makes you use a MacBook. Unfortunate as it sounds, it sounds like in the next couple of years from here on out, you might be well off running Linux or Ubuntu or Windows 10 or 7 or whatever. There's a lot of possibilities with this computer except for the fact that you are not going to be able to run any newer than Monterey when it comes to Mac OS versions on this computer. At the end of the day, you could still check emails on this computer, even running High Sierra, which is the last official support of this computer. That's what really matters. And in fact, you could even FaceTime, can even use iMessage, iCloud in High Sierra, despite it being over, what, six years old now? Almost six years old? It's not the end of the road. It's really not. And there's so much possibility still. And I'm very excited to see what the future holds for these computers because they are becoming relatively available now and I mean, they've actually been available for quite some time. Price is not an issue with these computers. The issue is going how long these will last until they're officially obsolete. They are getting there 
but I don't think it's within this year or next year or even the next two years. Could be maybe five years from now, 10 years from now. But again, that really goes back to what I was saying is that these MacBooks, despite being old, they are perfectly usable for a lot of applications, which is surprising. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.